Hey everyone, Will here from Mature Minded Gamers, and today we're going to be playing The King's Dilemma Chronicles, a new release from Horrible Guild and Big Trouble Game Studio. Now this is based on a board game of almost a similar name called The King's Dilemma. This is the single player video game, and I am excited to be giving it a shot today. Um, the first time I've actually played it, so uh, I, I have no idea what to expect here. Um, you know, I do enjoy the board game quite a bit, so a big obviously difference is this is single player Where the board game is a pretty big multiplayer game, so let's go ahead and dive right in So first off looks like we've got a warning disclaimer. We got some uh, Some stuff that uh, yeah, probably isn't uh, Best for everybody player discretion is advised so viewer discretion is advised as well Welcome to the Kingdom of Angst, a place of daring expeditions, gruesome battles, and arcane mysteries. Located in the northern content of Lywick, Lywick, Ank I don't even know how to say these words. Ankest is one of the largest kingdoms of the known world, but it's not the only one. The Kingdom of Muir is the northwest advanced both culturally and technology. The small and harmless kingdom of Sedalada, Sed, Sedlada, <laughs> to the southwest with its stingy lands. Where do they come up with these names? The Republic of Capias to the northeast with commercial abilities beyond imagination. So far, I dig the art. Not too bad. The Kasukian Empire to the distant east where the emperor lives in opulence with the people struggle. While wow, the people struggle. The southern continent barely explored is only known for the fierce ivory desert and the tales and legends shared by the few foreign travelers venturing to our lands. Ankist has been enjoying several decades of peace, but less than two centuries ago, it was divided into many small kingdoms and raider tribes, conquered in wars or united by diplomacy over the centuries to be incorporated as, as duchies or marks. I do dig that art. Little is known about what happened before this age of fragmentation, but what we know for sure is that all the lands of the known world were ruled by several lost civilizations throughout the ages. What caused these civilizations to fall is unclear. You are going to assume the role of head of council, a governing body ruling in the name of the king located in Libra, the capital city of Ankest. Ankest. Before you begin, take a quick test to determine the house that best suits you. Dig it. Uh, is a financial crisis in a financial crisis is immoral to sacrifice knowledge in order to save money. Hmm. Let's say no. We can hold the firm it. Okay. Is it okay to restrict certain religious practices that clash with the established cult? I don't think it's ever. Uh, okay to restrict certain religious practices if a neighboring country gets invaded do we step in to support them yes with childbirth on decline do we strongly incentivize families to have children we do each house has been different long-term goal and backstory which affects their mutual relationship and affinity select info to read more about the two houses and make your choice Uh, like the little crown here. Originally, the present Marquis of Tyrol has part of the Kingdom of Muir, but when the King of Muir asked to share and distribute the wealth of nobles of Tyrol with the rest of the kingdom, your ancestors rebelled. How dare you try to change what it has been? The nobles convinced the lower class that the next demand would be to take the children away from their mothers and distribute them to foreigners. In a few months, a revolt sparked in Tyrol. The reign of Ankest supported the revolt of the nobles and after a bloody war in the year of 143 Tyrol was annexed to Ankest and your family obtained the titles of Marquis Tyrol has long coastal strip washed by the Sierra Ocean but is practically uninhabited it is covered with forests and tormented by a stormy climate your people are terrified of the ocean and prefer to sail in the mild and tranquil waters of the Gulf of Isoropia or the wild and tranquil river Abni 
You are of a very conservative tradition and have every interest in keeping the poor in misery and ignorance so that they are easily recognizable and do not mix with pure lineage. Hmm. Sure. I don't even know. <coughs> Mike off. Mike on. Sorry about that. A group of scholars in Libria recently discovered the ancient chronicle often blame a black circle, a dark rising sun, a cursed eclipse, or other similar images for causing the demise of many past empires. After observing similar clues in recent years, historians started speculating about the existence of a secret society that has been leading civilizations to oblivion for centuries. This organization is referred to as the Black Dawn. Some think these they are a force of chaos, others view them as an engine for creative destruction, and some view them as heralds of a new dawn, harbingers of progress and change. Whatever their true nature is, it seems that a huge battle is coming. As head of council, you have the power to shape the future of this kingdom, but the Black Dawn is lurking in the shadows. Its existence is threatening and yet intriguing. Your role is to inform the king about the decisions of the council, but it is within your power to alter them if you wish, provided you have enough power. It is time to begin. A new king is about to be crowned. How will the future of Ancus unfold? We'll see. And the trumpets strike three, rising notes and Io as Ition doves are released as Harold V is crowned king by the prior mother of the cult. The people erupt in a cheer of joy. Our hopes of enduring prosperity are renewed with a new king. New king. Foreign dignitaries from Cossack, Copias, Sedlata, and Mir crown the royal castle, crowd the royal castle to evaluate the new king and win his favor. The ceremony is followed by a feast lasting for three days and nights along with all the streets of Libra, our capital city. A week later, sitting on his throne behind the grand chisel door of the council room, the new king addresses us for the first time. Any authority is flickering in power. Any authority is flickering, and power can be a blessing or a curse for those who, on whom it is exercised, he says. After a long pause, he has ruling is an unsolvable dilemma. Add to archives, whatever that means. All right, the Eclipse track keeps track of the six storylines of the King's Dilemma Chronicles, advancing into story chapter. When all storylines are complete, the Eclipse will end and the Uprising will start. All right, we got a map here. Um, so we choose a dilemma from the sidebar, change the zoom level between the entire continent, the Kingdom of Ancus, and the capital city of Liberty to reveal all available dilemmas. All right, these are the resources. We've got influence, wealth, morale, welfare, and knowledge. Every dilemma will move one of these resources, changing the stability of the current reign. All right, so we want things to kind of stay in the middle. So I can't read it all. I don't. All right, there's the world map. I kind of wish you could kind of read it a little bit. And the art reminds me of Gloomhaven a little here. All right, well, let's just do this one. The King's Dilemma, Torque. The High Commander has received a message from our soldier station at the troublesome northern border of the Mark of Torque. Scarum smugglers are offering to provide us large quantities of red iron, a strange metal that can break even the strongest steel. The army wants the majority of it, but there is a lot of money to be made by trading it. Do we reserve the red iron, a strong metal for the army? So to solve a dilemma, use your power to make the final decision after the council has gone through the voting phase. Improving the majority is free, but subverting it will cost you 
power equal to the difference in votes between the two sides. Be careful if the power reaches zero, the current reign will end. Solving the dilemma moves the resource on the track as predicted by the red and blue gauges. The amount by which the resource moves will be reeled after the vote. Um, yeah, we want this metal. A strong economy requires a strong army to protect it. The high commander contacts the smugglers to establish the operation. The steady flow of red iron from the mostly unexplored lands of Fo Fola Fjar Mountains is supplied directly to the smiths of the army with only a little remaining for our merchants. To thank the king for his, the prosperous business, the smugglers gift him a masterful red iron sword named the Scarlet Tide. The army soon elects the blade of its symbol and as a sign of its future power. A significant portion of the imported red iron starts flowing towards the royal army and military smiths begin experimenting with new ways of working with the sturdy metal. Because of its exceptional sturdiness, red iron is difficult to mold into weapons and iron, but a few blades are forged for the most elite regiments. All right, got the, uh, got the time. Each time a resource moves, the stability marker to the right will follow it. If the stability marker ever reaches either end of the track, the rain will end. Keep all the resources in the highlighted area of the track to score more points when the rain ends. Keep all the resources in the highlighted area of the track. So I guess I want to be in the top. Now I got the Scarlet Tide. Do we... Oh no, we've lost contact with the smugglers? We've lost contact with the smugglers. Many think they fell prey to the Skyrim Raiders in the Lawless Mountains. Oh, those Lawless Mountains. Some suggest that we should send a military contingent to investigate. A dangerous quest as it could be seen as trespassing by the Kingdom of Inkhall. <laughs> Further to the north with whom we have had contact for decades and whose military strength is unknown. Do we send the army to investigate the smuggler's disappearance? Well, absolutely. We need this red iron. With each dilemma, the time counter on the right will increase. When it reaches a space with a skull icon, the kingdom has a 50% chance of dying. Oh, the king has a 50% chance of dying. Or 100% if it reaches the final space. Holy cow. Okay. All right, we do send them. Our soldiers leave Torque heading for the harsh fall of your mountains. A few days later, only a handful of them come back. Oh, no. The survivors tell us that they found the smugglers camp and their corpses near the ankle border, but they were attacked by a handful of extremely skilled fighters bearing red iron weapons and armor. Despite their superior numbers, our soldiers barely managed to escape. Oh, no. Cer solving certain dilemmas will have permanent side effects on the kingdom when it happens. A chronicle will be registered in the table above the resource track their effects either positive or negative are applied to the corresponding resource at the beginning of every reign positive chronicles move the corresponding resource up by one space while negative chronicles move them down by the same amount interesting the sacrifice of the soldiers north of the border gave us insight into the kingdom of uncut's military strength and the way of fighting the prospect of further research on the subject excites our scholars Knowledge out of tragedy. Despite the relatively short distance contact with the Kingdom of Encal has lo lost for decades, the better lands that divide us allow very few exchanges, and they never had to much <laughs> had much to offer anyway. Though they were militaristic society, we consider the Encal as inoffensive as the Scarums, nomadic tribes living in the unclaimed brown hills along our border. Yet, despite their small numbers, it seems they become a threat thanks to red iron. They must have discovered it only recently, but they mastered it. it. It's harvesting and smithing much better than we have. The scouts we sent even sighted an impressive fortress reinforced with huge red iron plates they call the Crimson Keep. Oh no. <laughs> the 
Did we send the army to this? Oh, we already did that. Okay. So what went down here? Your moral alignment determines which rewards you will get at the end of each reign. The rewards could be coins, prestige, points, and or crave points. The resource track highlights the target area to score points. The more resources in the target area, the more you will be rewarded. Above the resource track, there's a preview of your rewards based on the current position of the resources and your moral alignment. I mean, we kind of want that high, don't we? Knowledge? I mean, obviously, we need food. We need lots of money, too. Interesting. Okay, so this could affect knowledge, military power, and knowledge, military power, and morale, I think it was. Yep. Yeah. All right, so let's do the Scarlet Tide in Libra. Upon inspecting the first weapons made with red iron, the chief doctor of the Royal Army realized it would be a wonderful material for medical equipment as it's sturdy even with th with when thin. This red iron is really important. Some suggest we should prioritize forging swords over scalpels, but our medical knowledge could vastly benefit from such superior tools. Do we prioritize medical use for red iron? When you vote against a council member, your relationship will worsen and then will eventually become our enemy. Oh, man. Voting in accord with the council member will improve your relations, and if it reaches the maximum level, you can spend coins to form an alliance. Well, everybody else is saying no. I kind of think it's a good idea. I mean, medical is important, right? So if I say yes, if I vote yes, morale and knowledge will go up. But if I say no, then our military strength will go down and I'll form some villains. I'm going to go ahead and say no. No, we do not prioritize medical use of a red iron. Because I want to keep that down, don't I? Healing our people is pointless if you cannot defend them. Given our limited supply of red iron, priority is given to the forging of red iron weaponry. So that went up. I thought it was going to move down. If a resource is moved twice in a row in the same direction, it'll move one additional step. The icon color will show you the last direction the resource moved. White if it moved up, black if it moved down. After the second time the resource moves in the same direction, it will gain a momentum marker and move two additional steps. The king has been abdicated. At the end of each reign, you will gain rewards as described by your morale alignment. If you manage to pull all the resources in the target area, you'll get even more rewards. If your reign lasts for three dilemmas or less, you won't get any rewards. You will also keep the same moral alignment. Rebel! At the end of each reign, you will have to choose the moral alignment for their heir of the head of the council. The longer the reign, the more moral alignments will be available. Manage the council. Review information about the house of the kingdom here. Spend coins or place council members into form alliances when the relationship level with another house is maxed out. If you form an alliance with another house, your total power increases by one. Alliances of other benefits such as reducing cost of corruption and cost of replacing council members. Costs are increased for enemies. With your choices, you can try to achieve the long-term goal of your house and two secondary goals. Completing them will grant you more power plus a bonus of cohesion or descent points for the uprising.
All right, let's do the Golden Harbor. The Royal Marshal reports to us that three windmills were set on fire last night along the road between Libra and Golden Harbor. The affected millers are asking for help for building their windmills. Sounds like a good idea. Do we fund the reconstruction of the damaged windmills? I think it's kind of important. We gotta have food. Spend coins to corrupt a council member and change their vote. The cost of corruption for a council member will increase each time you use it. Corrupting a council member will freeze the relationship between your houses for the current dilemma. Use corruptions wisely to manage both your relationships and power. With a monetary help of the crown, a small squad of carpenters is hired to rebuild the burned out windmills with the most advanced techniques available. After the work, we are informed that they notice the smell of an unknown alchemical substance at all three locations. Somebody burned it. So we lost some money. Because so, this is our money, our wealth here. Well, let's go to the world. Um, iron that pierces the sky, huh? The Tribune reports to us that an unprecedented drought has hit Tyrol, ravaging crops and decimating the cattle. The price of bread has increased to the point where many among the poorest can't afford it. That's not good. But the King of Muir is offering us uncannily cheap wheat. Importing it would save the poorest from starvation, but its low price is suspicious. Do we import low price Muir wheat? Well, we gotta have food, right? Be a good idea, I think. I mean, we, we have lots of food, so let's say no. Some of the poor people believe that our avarice might doom the poorest outcast to starvation. The royal treasurer praises our caution, but few others praise the council's efforts to keep the kingdom financially stable. Mirror's offer of cheap wheat was too good to be trusted. And recent news seems to prove our wisdom. Merchants coming back from Muir claim to have been, have seen local scholars pouring huge contents of wheat into the Arben River, a clear indication of its poor quality. Yet, with our other duchess also hit by the drought, albeit not as dramatically, they are unable to help, and the scarcity of food in Vandas, the capital city of Marco Tiro, becomes a constant problem. Those living in the countryside manage to get by, feeding off the small gifts of the land, but for the poorest outcasts living in the cities of the Mark, hunger is brutal. So we lost food and our morale went down. I kind of suspected that. See, it was red, so that made, led me to believe it was going to go down. This costs two money to do this. I think that's what that means. Let's see. The Tale of Sorrow of Vandas. Yeah, it costs two money to do that dilemma. Oidos, a merchant from the coast of importing fish into the Mark of Tarot, carelessly let a load of fish rot during transportation. No, when we're so low on food anyway. Taking advantage of the dire need for food in the cities of the rain, of the rain region, he sold it anyway at an obscene price. Causing a major epidemic of dysentery in the Vandis. Odos claims it was an honest mistake. Do we punish Odos, the rotten food seller? Okay, so. If we do. Does this. So I'm trying to decide here. But which way are these going to go? How do you know? We forced Otis to eat his own rotten fish for a week. The dreadful spectacle may deter other merchants from investing in our kingdom, but it'll definitely deter further scams. Holy cow! We lost money on that deal. Somehow we gained more food.
How do we get this to go the other direction? <laughs> oh, that's going to cost a lot of money. Tale of Sorrow. The people of Abnet, a village along the Abney River, complain that its waters have become a gray as ash. After irrigating the fields with these waters, their wheat turned gray and the bread obtained from it has the same uninviting color too. Many blame Muir for pouring their cheap wheat into Abney, but they deny it. Do we impose sanctions on Muir? Well, I think it's a good idea to do so. And Okay, yep, I see. So that if we vote yes, then this should go up. Muir says they didn't know what was happening, but it doesn't matter. They must compensate us. The additional funds from the sanctions will surely be helpful, but hunger still haunts the cities of Tyrol, and the poorest outcasts are forced to eat bread produced from the gray wheat. Because of its uninviting color, they call it ash bread. Ash bread is uninviting to most, but it is a gift to the surveying outcasts who can finally afford something to eat. Although its effects were hidden at first, regular consumption over the prolonged time causes sickly grayish spots in the skin around the lips and down the belly. Not good. The mark is now visible on many of the beggars from Bandis. People start calling them Ashers and many claim they are prone to violent outbursts. The rising tensions cause many incidents and superstitious people even believe that their soul now belongs to strange old gods. Ashers, however, claim they are just discriminated against for their visible mark of poverty. Hmm. Let's see about these Ashers here. Last night, a group of Ashers camping in an alley in Vanus assaulted some intolerant, superstitious people who were trying to force them out of their makeshift pallets. People are frightened by the rising tension and have suggested that we forbid people from circulating at night to prevent further outbursts of violence. Do we institute a curfew in Vandis? No, I don't think it's necessary. Oh man, morale's gonna go down. So why would I swing the favor? If I vote yes... As a firm response, we proclaim a state of emergency and institute a curfew in Vandis, forbidding all but the city guards from moving freely at night. With nothing preventing ashes from wandering the streets during the day, though, some of the superstitious intolerants are debating the opportunity to take even more decisive action on their own. Well, that's not good, I guess. After curfew was instructed in Vandis, all beggars living in the streets, ashes are not forced to find another place to sleep at night. Some fanatics and self-proclaimed defenders believe the council is siding with the allegedly malignant Ashers in Tyrell and have decided to take matters in their own hands. These dangerous vigilantes control the streets of Vanus with the declared intent of securing the city from Asher violence. Many Ashers are rudely beaten up. Or worse, Ashers don't abstain from equally heinous acts of violence either. It is difficult to ascertain whether this is the cause of the defenders' actions or a reaction to them. While the debate rages, flocks of crows circle over the woods of Tyrell, feasting on the corpses of those hanged by the defenders. Man, all this violence going on. So, the strength of our army went up because we instilled a curfew? Oof, man. What's this button there? <laughs> Studying the retiree terrain around the capital of Angst will allow the construction of underground structures and tunnels.
This table summarizes the types of preparation and the rewards. Let's see here. This preparation completes at the end of the rain. Interesting. All right. So we've got time to complete, which is the pie chart. The rewards inside here. Coins are on the right. Final dilemmas in the middle. And then crave and prestige. And then status is it's unknown, it's complete, or it's locked. You unlock more preparations as you progress through the campaign. So visit the screen frequently to come prepare for the big battle that is to come. You won't be able to unlock all the preparations in a single playthrough, as some will be locked out depending on the choices you make. So our narrative goal is to subdue the outcasts. The secondary goal is to establish the separatist movement and then make slavery accepted. That's our goal. Interesting. So we have a goal. Ooh, I, I tell you what, that is kind of... That is kind of a... Uh, uh, viewer discretion is advised kind of thing so our secondary goal is to make slavery accepted secondary goal is to establish a separatist movement and we've got to subdue the outcasts as our narrative goal man i i'm based on the questions that i asked at the beginning these are my goals that's kind of interesting all right so there's our archives things that are saved so knowing that i guess Let's go to the Ashers. Our spies have discovered that the gray wheat disease was caused by an experimental fertilizer invented by the disreputable Mira scholar Euclidius. The kingdom of Mira knew but decided to hide the truth from us. This leaves us no other choice but to go to war. Do we send an assassin after the inventor of the gray grain in Mira? Oof. I mean, did he know? I mean, that's really the question. I mean, did he know he was that's what that's what the fertilizer did? I mean, that's the dilemma, I guess. Right? Is you know, what do you do with these this information? I mean, because we only have little bits of of what is actually happening. Um, so, I mean, we're not 100% sure on the whole story, yet we have to make a decision here. So, I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I don't necessarily think it's a great idea to, to, to assassinate anyone, but, uh, I mean, do we want this to be hired? Right, let, let's do it. Let, let's let's send an assassin out. We do not tread lightly against those that protect the enemies of the kingdom. A few days later, the news that Eclidus was found dead, drowned in his own fertilizer, is widely reported. We're going to war. Uh, the Myrians unleashed the ash bread plagued upon us their, uh, they, by utter incompetence, if not without fraudulent intent. Even worse, they try to hide the truth from us. We have no other choice but to declare war. We have to prepare for battle. Do we... Oh. I think we gotta handle this war. Our troops are stationed in Turil, waiting for instructions from the commander. An area is relatively close to the border, so a focused attack from the south could settle the matter quickly. But we could also use the Abney River to send some soldiers into the heart of their territory. Do we split our force? I don't think so. I mean, is it ever a good idea to split the force? I don't know how to close this window. There it goes. Nah, everybody else is saying yes. Yeah, whatever. 
Since we have no confirmation of the king's whereabouts and no accurate information on the defense capabilities of the capital city, we said it is best for a diver <laughs> diversify our strategy. Our larger troop will attack from the south, while another will navigate the Abney River upstream to land deeply into enemy territory. This strategy turns out to be a winning one, as Anier's defense is more focused towards the south. After three full days of siege, from two sides, the city finally falls. After our resounding victory against the Kingdom Muir, we imposed new tribute tributes on the defeated kingdom and brought home many precious spoils of war. I don't know what that token meant. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got this violence here going on. Kind of getting into many different scenarios. Let's go to the uh, castle's library for the Ashers. The rector reports that Herod, a famous historian, is performing research on the legendary first king, Omad, who allegedly lived at a time when the mother was still on earth. Proving that he was born in our territories would bring us great prestige. Only the oldest monasteries may still contain documents that date back to the mother's time, but males are not allowed to enter these sacred havens. Do we allow Herod, a historian, to research the first king? would drop morale and if morale drops again it's gonna go down fast so, so I say no pursuit of knowledge even such a noble endeavor would still be a will still abide should still abide our tradition the prior mother applauds our wisdom and no man will be granted access to the mother's monasteries and has been tradition for the past few centuries Ever since recent earthquake, we have started receiving news of increasingly eerie events surrounding the Monastery of Lorien in the Duchy of Natar. One of the most ancient buildings in the kingdom. The locals lament that the nights are no longer natural. The children never stop crying. Stars are dimmed and streams exhibit strange purple reflections. Many claim this is no longer a holy place and blame Sister Celestina, the high priestess of the monastery. She allegedly found ancient documents about the mother and started performing weird rituals. Disquieting reports from Lorian also tell of people going missing in the region. Celestina is acquiring a sinister reputation with the local folks. Whew. You can restore relationship with an enemy by voting four times in their favor. Doing so will reset the relationship to the default value. Okay. So that dropped twice. Do we allow Harry to story in? Okay, we were to do that one. Perfect. So this could affect morale, wealth, and welfare, like food, health of the population. Okay. Yeah, let's do that one. Let's do the Ashers again. The merchant Zemo started selling a strange concoction, which is supposed to hide the marks of the Ashers. It is if it's if efficacy. It's not efficiency. If efficacy is dubious to say the least. I have no idea what that word is. Let's actually look that up, ladies and gentlemen. Efficacy. The ability to produce a desired or intended result. All right. Big words. Learn something today. Do we ban Zemo's Mark Healing Potion? I think we should. I mean, we don't know the actual... But that's going to drop morale. And that's going to make a tank fast. So I say new. No.
Many Asher's flock to the merchant. A few of them see a slight reduction of the dark spots around the mouth, but many more suffocate horribly as a result of the alleged cure. Regardless of these ends, people keep trying to push in the hope of getting rid of their unsightly marks. The infamous healing potion created by Zemo offers to afflict the health of those Asher's willing to get rid of their gray marks and fool enough to believe the notorious swindler. We got a little money off it, I guess. Solving certain dilemmas will have permanent side effects of the kingdom. When this happens, a chronicle will be registered in the table in the above resource track. Their effects, either positive or negative, are applied to the corresponding resource at the beginning of every reign. Positive chronicles move the corresponding resource up by one space, while negative chronicles move them down by the same amount. If you manage to complete a fill a column of chronicles table with positive chronicles, you add one power to your pool. All right, well, so the next reign, food or welfare, is going to be down by two. Knowledge will be up by one, and wealth will be up by one. Hmm. Alrighty then. There are no dilemmas in Libra, so let's go to Ankist. What do we want to try to increase here? I think we still got this secret tide going on. And we could potentially affect morale. But it's going to cost us five money. We only have seven, so I don't really know that that's such a good idea. Because getting low on resources here. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resolve this storyline. Sorello, a Codinian merchant from Duan, Duin has taken an interest in the Scarlet Tide, the King's Red Sword. He is offering a kindly sum to purchase a replica. The army, however, has grown attached to its new symbol. They would not like to see its symbolic value tainted and diluted from the caprice of some lazy Kodnian merchant. Do we allow a replica of the Scarlet Sword to be made? No! And if we say no, then our morale will increase, or I think... We politely decline. Our soldiers rejoice over our decision, but not to turn their symbol into a commercial product. They are Kodinians Kud are known for being rich and refined, but weak and decadent to positive morale. Ever since our decision to forbid the manufacture of a replica, the Scarlet Tide has been cherished even more. Its sight fills the battle lines with courage and determination. Time is progressing. Well. I don't see any more Scarlet Tide ones. Do you have anything that it would increase knowledge? Eerie rumors. Ooh, that cost all our money. Oh, no, I didn't see that. After sneaking into the monastery of Lorien, a merchant known as Viraje Greyhand has been selling secrets, tombs he stole from its library. If we show him mercy, he promised to help us track down the books he sold. Hmm, do we execute him? I mean, do we... It's only going to drop down one, and that's going to go up. So I'm going to say no, we don't execute him when we get some more knowledge. Thanks for the cooperation of Virgil Greyhand. The tombs are recovered. Only the buyer of the Mother and Legend and Flesh cannot be tracked down. Greyhand swears was sold to be a shrouded woman in Lorraine. Oh, no. He died. The king is dead! Long live the king! So, one, uh, what was that resource? I can't remember what it was called. Uh, let's sit down here. 
it's like prosperity or something. It's a one uh, for every resource in the upper area of the track, one negative for every resource in the lower area of the track. We don't have any lower. One additional and one additional in the center of the track is empty. Ooh, okay, so we should have gotten one positive. We got two and one. Ooh. Oh, our welfare kingdom is not the best. Well, that's rebel. Okay. Because we're rebel. I never picked this before that I remember. He's in the, in the one for every white resource and one for every black resource in the central area of the track because it moved down. Let's go opulent. I don't know what this means. Are we changing it? I mean, I don't... Spend your prestige and crave. Prestige and crave. There we go. To prepare for the uprising. Each preparation allows its rewards and the required number of reigns will be completed. Mic off. Mic on. Rewards are collected at the beginning of each reign after you complete the preparation. Additionally, most preparations unlock a dilemma that we'll face in the uprising. So, man, I, I've got to spend... Oh, three. You want both. Okay. I thought you were just kind of wanting one or the other. <laughs> to rock. I've voted against them a couple times. I think I've got to vote with them a couple times. But they're my nemesis. More rumors. More violence. More opulent king, though. Let's go to the iron pierces in the sky. Let's continue that. Increasingly, rumors of the fierce kingdom of Uncall worry our people. Many think we should recruit more soldiers among the peasants to patrol the unclaimed lands north of our border. Scholars believe we should instead investigate the customs of Uncall to ascertain whether they really are a menace and to clarify the misunderstanding caused by the smugglers. Do we recruit more peasants into the army? Well, do do we need to? I mean, so if we vote yes, our I kind of want more knowledge. I kind of want to raise knowledge for a chain and see what's going to go on there. Trusted scholars begin to research the customs of the kingdom of Call while a delegation of brave diplomats leaves for the Crimson Keep to ask for an official audience. Many, however, fear we are leaving our borders unprotected. Our decision to investigate the culture kingdom of Call sparked the keen interest of our scholars, fascinated by their unusual customs and habits. After the initial diplomatic incident, our diplomats have been formally invited to the northern court of the Crimson Keep, where they are welcomed respectively, but coldly. And call is a small but highly competitive society. 
Their clans constantly struggle for leadership, and their warrior kings must display continuous strength to stay in power, which explains their exceptional military prowess. While some might regard them as barbarians, they are organized and disciplined. Serving in the army is the highest honor for them, reserved for those who prove might and impeccable courage. Though few in number, they prove a formidable foe. Still, they are honorable. As long as they are not provoked, they should pose no danger. Woo, look at that knowledge go. Oh my goodness. So it represents the equilibrium in society. It is at best when this is in the middle of the track, meaning that the realm is perfectly balanced. When it nears the lower end of the track, things are going extremely badly, causing social tension. When it nears the top end, on the other hand, some factions are accumulating more power than others, creating instability. I kind of want to get welfare. Let's go with these eerie rumors because I need. To, I want some welfare up. The sinister rumors surrounding Sister Celestina piled up over the last few months as young girls are going missing all around Lorien, Lorraine. Many claim her ominous influence defiled the ancient monastery. The Guard local farmers started moving away out of fear, but arresting a relatively prominent religious figure could equally cause discontent. Oof. Man. Unless you think it's a good idea to arrest her. But, but, girls are going missing. We got to. The Royal Marshal arranges the arrest of Sister Celestina. A small contingent of well-equipped and trained soldiers starts marching towards the Monastery of Lorraine. In response, the cult organizes many protests against the council throughout the kingdom for arresting a high priestess. The march of the army towards the Monastery of Lorraine is long and uneventful. However, as they cross the border of the Duchy of Natar and enter the eerie woods of the Clover Massive, restless nightmares start plaguing the soldiers asleep. sleep. A scholar traveling with them to investigate the rumors about Lorraine seemed convinced that this is just power of suggestion playing tricks on their minds. Their voyage is accompanied by increasingly sinister rumors about the high priestess in the monastery, Sister Celestina, who allegedly dabbled with lost forbidding rituals. Morale didn't drop that much, I guess. Oh, it's going to cost all my money to do it. Let's continue this march. By the time the army reaches the Monastery of Lorraine, Celestina has already escaped. Only the Kana, a self-proclaimed sister of the unending, is there with a message from the High Priestess. Celestina found a ritual that could make our ruler immortal, but she would need eight young girls in a quiet place to study and practice. The prior mother is outraged and demands that we stop this aberration. Do we entrust eight girls in it for her experiment? Absolutely not. <laughs> Say no sacrifice. Larcin is arrested. We instruct the army to locate the captures. Larkana, Larka is arrested. We instruct the army to locate and capture Celestine and all of the sisters of the end ending. Her heretical acolytes. But it would be no easy task as they are covered their tracks. They escape Lorraine. The prior mother applauds her decision as the cult views her morality as a curse which prevents one from going back to the mother's womb. After we refuse to hand over eight girls to a certainly grim fate, Celestina seems intent to proceed with her plan on her own. The sisters of the unending, her, heretic her 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 heretical acolytes, begin causing havoc in the realm. Nobody knows where they are based, but we receive reports of their appearance in the strangest places, seeking to acquire medical instruments like saws and scalpels. When girls start disappearing around the kingdom, many immediately assume they're responsible. The army is hunting them down and managed to arrest some. However, none of the captured sisters then they seem willing to reveal Celestina's plans. Well, this ain't good. I thought your morale would drop because. Girls are disappearing here. Mm. 
March to Lorraine. Lorraine, whatever. The Royal Marshal reports us that among the newly drafted recruits coming to Libra from the yearly recruitment campaign for the garrison of the capital, all those coming from the lands of the Tar are found to be particularly violent. Some say too violent. Do we stop recruiting the violent people of Natar? Huh. Excessive violence can make the army uncontrollable. We decide to avoid recruiting the Tarians. As an unexpected side effect, people from around the kingdom start escaping military service by moving into Tar. Our army will suffer for the smaller numbers. Uh oh. Ever since we stopped conscripting young soldiers from the region, the lush lands in Tar have been proving bountiful rewards for the harvesters. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> the enemy clothed in shadow. Titus, a retired soldier from the unit sent to the monastery of Lorraine, has strange strangled one of his former comrades in his sleep. Military code requires a capital punishment, but he claims that he was the prey of mal malevolent nightmares and acted upon his own will. Do we execute Titus up for the soldier? The uh, Titus the soldier. Uh, I mean. He probably was act that's the thing though, he was acting. You know, when we do this, we're gonna we're gonna get a negative. I don't know I mean the law must be upheld to the letter or there is no law. We have the soldier hanged in full view of the army to dissuade similar acts. And all this stuff going on in Lorraine. I'm gonna keep checking that stuff out. Muffled cries are heard tonight in the lands around the monastery of Lorraine, scarring the locals. The people of the nearby Eric village are organizing vigilante patrols to investigate, but untrained, weapon willing people roaming at night might cause many accidents. Do we ban the self proclaimed patrols in the lands around Lorraine? I mean, we shouldn't. If we think about it. We got all these girls disappearing and stuff. I guess with a confident display of force, the guards disarm the vigilantes before they cause any incidents. The people in the tar keep reporting strange nocturnal sounds. Even if no concrete proof or explanation has been found, the local population lives in a state of constant alert. Uh oh. The king has been abdicated. We got four. Well, we need we need some in here too. All right. So we can't choose rebel, I guess. We want to keep everything in the middle. You could build a food pantry. Okay. 
save in there. All right, everybody. So this has been the King's Dilemma Chronicles. Um, you know, it, to be honest with you, it, it seems very similar enough to the actual board game that, uh, you know, kind of had an idea of what was going on and everything. The, obviously, learning how this particular version works. But uh, I, I honestly feel if you like playing the King's Dilemma, but um, you can't always get a group together or, you know, maybe you can't get the same group together every time or whatever your, your, your issues are with playing the King's Dilemma. Maybe you just don't have enough time to continue to play one game. Um, if you like that game, but you want to have a single player type experience, I think this is actually a really good fit for you. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. I was, I feel like I was making, man, some really tough decisions. Um, you know, the, the thing that's lost though, that I feel with playing this solo is that, um, is that conversation around the table, you know? Um, and that's the thing that I really liked about playing the board game or even having this as a, if there was a multiplayer version of this where we could talk and debate and um, try to pass some coin back and forth, you know what I'm saying? To, to try to sway other people um, into your, your thought process and your voting ideas, um, I think would have actually could actually make this game even better but for, but for what it is as far as like a solo experience i i think you would have a lot of fun if you do like king's dilemma um a lot of a lot of storyline a lot of interconnected things and it and, and it's pretty cool um a big long campaign game which is fantastic and just a lot of fun in general so um be sure to check this one out um it it's it's absolutely it's fun it's uh, it's quick it easy to, to go along with so I, I had a lot of fun with it and uh, i'll probably continue to play it so all right everybody this has been will from mature minded gamers and uh be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on the uh, bottom of the window here and until then everyone have a fantastic day check out uh, maturemindedgamers.com so until next time take care